Welcome back to the Carpet Chinks Detailing Channel. His name's Carl. And his name's Andy. Now, today's video, are you plagued by water spots? I haven't got a clue what I'm going to say now, but <laughs> I just thought I'd chat. Welcome back to the Carpet Chinks Detailing Channel. His name's Carl. And his name's Andy. Now, you clicked on the thumbnails, so you want to know about water spot removal. So, do you have a problem with water spots? Is it interrupting your cleaning regime, whether you're an amateur, professional, weekend warrior, keen enthusiast, etc.? Or are you just a, an accessory pervert that wants the latest kit? Well, if the answer to any of those questions is a yes, this is the video for you. As you can see, we took a delivery. Well, actually, you took a delivery this week. Well, the wife did. The wife did. Three big boxes have turned up. And as you can see from the label, okay, it's from a brand called Big Boy. Some of you may have heard of them. Some of you may not have had, but it's our first exposure to this brand. So really looking forward to this one. I really look forward to this one. So before we do all the chatty stuff, we've got a lot of education on this. Okay, we're going to talk about sort of water filtration systems, DI vessels and all that kind of stuff. Who uses them, who should be using them, the benefits, the cons, the pros, the cons, and all that kind of stuff. But before we actually um, get to the talk of it, we've got to build this. Nice and easy setup then, just push the wheels on and secure up with the nuts provided. Position the handles to where you want them and secure with the bolts provided. And the actual unit is secured to the trolley using these four screws, so you'll need a small crosshead or cross point screwdriver. Place your cartridge into the tank and then apply the supplied grease all around the O-ring recess, making sure grease goes all the way around. Then gently place the O-ring into the actual recess and make sure it sits flush. You then guide the tank to line up to the cartridge location pin on the top assembly and tighten the tank clockwise until it's hand tight and then use the supplied wrench to tighten up. The cartridge location pins can be seen here in the middle and they can be removed if you have a high pressure pressure washer but we left ours fitted and it worked fine. The unit does come with spare o-rings so should you pinch one okay you can replace it and it's as easy as that okay come and join us for a chat okay we thought we'd sit down for this so um all we've done so far is put it together so it's an important part when you're making a purchase as to how easy this sort of kit is to um sort of get ready now of course you can just buy the filter system on its own and it's going to be sitting on the floor um but we've come to the conclusion we highly recommend the stand um, in terms of construction um my my thoughts are pretty much mirror yours um i definitely like the stand i think it is robust enough to carry the three and of course you can use a stand for the two filter system that's the one with, um, um, just with one DI and one carbon. Um, I was a bit concerned about this four screws um, being so small connecting the actual unit to the stand, but no problems there whatsoever. Does the job fine. Um, and the beauty of this is the ability to change these cartridges are excellent, but we're going to come back to the benefits at the end. So all in all, a really, really good bit of kit. Okay, so the only bit you really need to set up is the actual calibrating the TDS. Now, when you first get your machine, connect it all up, all right, turn it to filter and let it run for about five minutes. That enables all the water to come through the carbon filter, the resin and all that kind of stuff. It gets all nice and settled down before you actually um, do the calibration. Now you did the calibration, there's one top tip you got on this. Yes, yeah, so with the calibration, when it says uh, about digits flashing, the only digits that do flash is the PPM, so the parts per million. Uh, once that's flashing, you can do your calibration then. 
obviously reset, do the final reset, yeah. and then that's good to go. Okay, quick teach, teach a bit. TDS, total dissolved solids or parts per million meters that this one has got. Now, a lot of people seem to think that it's physically measuring how much dissolved solid is in the water. Not strictly true. What these do is all they are doing is they're putting a couple of electrodes actually in the water and it looks at Ohm's law. It looks at the relationship between current voltage and resistance and all that kind of stuff. And if there's conductivity in the water, okay, that means there's dissolved solids in it. So if you've got water which has got no dissolved solids in it, there'll be no conductivity, this reads zero. But as you start getting impurities in the water, the conductivity of the water increases and the TDS will give you a figure with reference to total dissolved solids, but it's not actually measuring the bits in it, okay? It's giving a reference, okay, of TDS relative to the conductivity of the water, all right? So there's just a bit of a geeky, geeky stuff. Newsflash to me, and I should know this, pure water does not conduct electricity. Oh, that's, be that's brilliant. So uh, take baths in uh, pure water so the wife can't kill you. Absolutely. Anyway, we'll move on. Okay, so the main reason me and Carl went for this one is we looked at the single sort of uh, deionizer cartridge um, 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 methods out there, uh, and we like the fact that this one comes with a carbon filter and two DI vessels as well. Now, the reason why um, we like this one is, like I said, the carbon filter, and the carbon filter is a pre-filter for these two, all right? So it's going to take the majority, um, it's going to lower that hardness of the water down, it's going to take out the big bits, all right? So it's going to take out the nasty stuff. Now, if you're, you know, taking your water from a water vat or something, or rainwater it's going to have all sorts of crap in there as well so this active carbon filter is going to help what the car uh, carbon filter also does is it helps as chemical reaction which is going to help to neutralize um, chemicals like chlorine and even in pesticides and all that kind of stuff the beauty of that is it's then going to protect okay or reduce the impact of them chemicals on the actual di vessels so it's going to prolong the life of these because the one thing that resin does not does not like is all the chemicals and all that kind of stuff so that is the main reason why we went for one with a carbon filter. Okay, so once it's gone through the carbon filter, it's going to come onto the resin filters, and the resin filters are going to do what resin filters do, all right? So the water's going to come out there, all cleaned up through the carbon filter. It's then going to go through the resin, be passed on to the next one with the intent of basically taking it down to zero parts per million. Okay, quick talk around the system then, okay, keeping it nice and simple. So the water comes out the tap, all right, comes down the hose, it goes in through here. Um, we'll talk about the settings in a minute. The water then goes to the carbon filters, pass it to the first sort of resin filter, pass to the second resin filter, and comes out over to your pressure washer, hopefully at zero parts per million. Now, a couple of things um, to point out. It does have a really, really good selector valve here, okay, so you can see here. Now, the arrow is what you're looking at, all right? So the arrow is pointed to filter. So if that one's on filter and that one's on filter, that one there, it is going to basically t take the water and pass it through the filters. Now, we're going to talk about when you, you want to use DI um, water or spotless water a bit, uh, bit later on, but you're not always going to want to filter your water. So what you can do then is you can actually turn this to bypass, turn that one to bypass as well, all right, and what that will then do is the water coming in here will not go through the filter system, but will go around the back, on this nice sort of armoured hose will come right round there and come out. So basically, it's taking this machine out the equation. Really, really, Carl, you're mic'd up still, are you? Yep. Okay, that is a brilliant function of this because we so, see so many of the DI ones where people are maybe only using it for final rinse, they're then having the disconnect and everything. It's just so simple. You just turn the valves, right? And then when you want it back to sort of filter it, just turn that back turn that back and it's then going to direct the actual water through the filter system that in my eyes is genius i love that well it's one of the, the other points why we we got this this machine because the, yeah. the ability to bypass the the filtration system is is was ideal for us absolutely and we're going to talk about when okay you should um you, you know you require uh, filtered water when you don't and um, at the end final bit i just want to point out is that you've actually got the tds meter here and it's got two switches you've got in and out so you can actually set so it's not turned on at the moment you can select in which will give you a reading of the water quality coming in then you select it to out okay and it'll show you the water quality coming out that is the important, ignore the eight of the moment. That is the important one, all right, because you need that reading zero. We'll talk about at the end of the video what you should do when it starts rising, but that is your indication the water coming out, okay, is 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 good quality and it hopefully it's not going to cause a water spot. So 
So before we start testing, we need a blank canvas, a test car. So I'm going to be using Carl's car. He's just applying the citrus pre-wash at the moment. So we're going to give it a full maintenance wash. Um, so we know there's no water spots on the vehicle. And then we're going to start our testing both from a water spot um, test and also the enhancement potentially of the chemicals themselves. Okay, so that's the wash sequence done um, to give us a blank canvas, a car with no water spots. Now we, we had the system on for the full, full process. Um, we didn't switch it to bypass, so we had filtered water coming through. There are no water spots, that's why he's laughing. Stress-free washing, we didn't have to worry about it. Great day for testing, it must be in the mid-twenties, um, strong sunlight and all that kind of stuff. No water spots, but these are merely words, Carl, aren't they? They are, they are, so we'll leave our wrap-up to the end. Absolutely, but we need to prove to you the benefits of using a system like this, so we're now entering the test phase. Okay, so the testing phase, and um, to prove to you that deionized water doesn't leave those nasty water spots, which we know if we leave them on, can actually start etching into the clear coat. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna do a half and half on the actual paintwork and the windscreen. So on this side here, on the paintwork and on the glass, we're gonna use um, unfiltered water, essentially straight from the tap. All right, so Carl's gonna go and switch the bypass um, function on, and then we're gonna reset, and we're gonna use on this half of the bonnet and that half of the windshield, uh, um, the deionized water. And then we're just going to leave it and come back when all the waters evaporate. So hopefully this side, nothing, and um, potentially we're going <coughs> to see the um, actual marks on this side. So um, we're going to go over. Just we, we we like to shoot things raw. So as we've already discussed in the intro, Carl's going to switch that to arrow bypass on both sides. Right, that's now going to take the water, as we've already discussed, through into the inlet here, bypass the filter system and come straight out um, onto the actual um, nozzle of the pressure washer. So we're going to do this test first. So all Carl's doing at the moment, he's purging out the deionized water. All right, so that's the test. So he knows that the water coming out of there is just normal tap water because we switched the bypass. Okay, so we've moved the car out into the sun to facilitate this test. So um, Carl's just going to spray this side, essentially with tap water. So once again, Carl's going to now purge out the tap water to make sure that the water coming in is deionized. Okay, so now we're going to spray this side with deionized water. And we shall now go for a coffee. Okay, the proof test to see the difference. Now, hopefully the GoPro can pick it up, but it is blatantly obvious to me. So that was basically tap water. It's a hot day and this is what you're always up against. All those streaks, the water spots go over to the side that we used the demineralized water and absolutely clear. Now, Carl, can you actually see any water spots on that side? No, I can't. And this car is incredibly susceptible. As you've seen in previous videos, and me and Andy have had to work with it, susceptible to water spots, especially in this kind of weather. Agreed. On the glass, the same story. All those, you can see them, all those nasty water spots. And on the side where we use demineralized water, there's no trickery, this 100% honest test. And this, this is a game changer for me. 
Um, well, for the really, both of us. It really <laughs> is. Um, and we'll go into our, our final thoughts um, afterwards. But so, so clear. Day, day, day and night. Day and night. Yeah. Really, really, really impressive. So the problem with this now, obviously, is we're going to have to use something like this, which is a water spot remover. It's an extra step to your process, but we've shown that with the correct equipment, okay, you don't need to use them. All right. Now, you can still blow dry your car and all that kind of stuff. And the beauty of this is you can basically leave your car to dry and you don't have to use a blower, which is another step, or a drying towel which runs the risk of inducing sort of marring and all that kind of stuff so this is the safest way of doing it it is drying itself but not leaving okay all that stuff now now the the, the debate here is we all chase um, water spots don't we because it's an indicator that something's left behind and we like the tall high beads but would you agree that really it, it's got an inherent problem because once those water spots evaporate if you're not using DNI, deionized water all that calcium magnesium is basically solidifying and, and as we know it it, it, it can attack your clear coat so should we get into the bead debate or should we leave that for another time i think that we'll leave that for another time because when we start talking about waxes we love a bit of good beading absolutely so it's 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 one of those beading things. or sheeting now i i love beading i can't I, i'm only winding about i know it raises a valid point though beads are bad from a water spot point of view but beads are good because they're an indication that your protection is there so uh, we'll carry on that discussion another time Okay, welcome to the Carboteaks uh, testing facility with Carla and Andrew. He's a good looking lad, isn't he? Look at that cheesy grin. Right, okay, so there is the um, reported benefit of using demineralized water that it can actually change okay, the, some, some of the properties of your wash media. So we're gonna look at shampoo and snow foam and see if demineralized water affects it. So basically we're looking for maybe differences in foam consistency, the loiterate and all that kind of stuff. So this is the uh, first time we've done an experiment like this. So it was, it's quite interesting to see what happens. It'd be definitely interesting to see what happens. Absolutely, so Carl has measured this equally. So we We've put 450? No, 400 ml of... 400 ml of demineralized water in that one, 400 ml, uh, milliliters of tap water in that, and in each one, we're gonna use 50 milliliters of um, Garage Therapies one, uh, one Snow Foam V2. We're then gonna apply the snow foams to the vehicle and do a sort of visual comparison of the two. So um, if you wanna pull that in, Carlos, we're gonna do exactly the same for the um, tap water as well. Okay, so as discussed, Carl has got a demineralized water in this one here we've got the um, di vessel plumbed in to filter so everything in this test is demineralized when we go do the tap water it'll be tap water in there we'll switch it to bypass on the di uh, system so it'll just be purely tap water so off you go carl Okay, so tap water, uh, DI vessels turn to bypass, so everything involved in this scenario is pure tap water. We're gonna apply it on exactly the same as when we used the demineralized water, and then we're gonna do a side-by-side -side comparison and see if there's any difference. Okay, so we've done the snow foam test. We're gonna do a very, very similar test um, on shampoos to see if there's any difference in sort of the, the volume of suds and how quickly suds go uh, down in the bucket. It's a rough and ready test, but it shows potentially that the demineralized water is doing something different to the chemicals. So what's the test we're gonna do, Carlos? So we're uh, gonna pour some shampoo, 25 mil. We've lost our little measuring cup, so I'm having to use the 25 mil marker on the uh, Arva premium cup but both the cups have got it so still being yeah, equal exactly so 25 mil in both them and then one will get uh, demineralized water the other one will get tap water
Okay, so we've done the product test with the snow foam and the shampoo. Rough and ready test, but quite interesting the results. And um, I wasn't expecting to see a difference and hopefully that um, has shown up on camera. So evaluation time then, Carl, what were your observations with the snow foam? He's laughing because <laughs> this is take five. He keeps, he keeps cocking up on this. Right, so with the snow foam, when it was supplied with using the deionized water, we saw a much thicker consistency. The dwell slash slip rate was much longer. And in my opinion, I felt it was it was much better. Mm. I definitely saw that as well. Um, it, the tap water seemed a bit more aerinated, so I agree with the um, deionized water seemed a bit thicker. And we showed I showed that side by side. There was a definite difference yeah. in the um, slip rate. Now, whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, okay, that's that's subjective. That's you know as to whether you want that or not. But it proves on our rough and ready test there was definitely a difference. Absolutely. The shampoo, the difference was a bit more noticeable on that one. Um, we um, did exact same test and sort of filled them up and put them on a um, sort of a, a time warp to see if the sort of uh, the bubbles started diminishing. The one with the deionized water, that pyramid of foam at the top didn't budge but the tap water one started going down again so uh, uh, another difference and yeah. it, it adds to the point that there seems to be something going on in terms of dni's water seems to give thicker more consistency of, of suds in terms of a snow foam and a shampoo but that takes into account that you're probably going to be able to use then less product mm -hmm. to get the same suds and slip uh, you know you, absolutely you, Absolutely. It'd be interesting if anyone else is operating these um, DI machines and um, whether you've had similar things, whether you've actually done that test yourself. Uh, but we read Big Boy did profess to that being a, <coughs> a potential benefit. And our tests, and I keep saying it, it's just our tests under our conditions, seem to definitely show a difference. The difference wasn't massive on the snow foam, on the shampoo, definitely noticeable. Okay, quick wrap up, and then we're going to discuss the cost and the running cost, which is probably what a lot of people are interested Absolutely. in. Absolutely. Okay, so um, we've already discussed the benefits in terms of the apparent advantages or influence on the products and the main thing from this which in my um, eyes was a game changer and why I haven't got one of these years ago was that ability to just not have to dry your car there wasn't just a few water spot spots there was nothing no. all right so I, I absolutely um, love uh, love this, this bit of kit. So black cars are prolifically bad for water spots, especially with the weather we've been having. And that was, for me, a game changer mm. in, in, in regards to the car. And It takes the stress away. Mm. You know, uh, we'll talk about who should be using this kind of stuff, but it was effortless. There was no stress. You could chill out. Um, you know what I mean? And the fact that, uh, well, we're going to come on to the benefits and everything. So we'll discuss that now. So who, who do you think would benefit from one of, this, uh, one of these? Is it everyone? Because from our point of view, from, you know, keen enthusiasts, we do do a lot of cars and we do videos. We're not washing cars as quick as some people because we're doing a, pro a process. We're stopping, we're resetting the camera. We're going back to the script and everything. The opportunity to, for water spots to appear is greater doing it the way we do it. So from a YouTuber, especially in the summer, this is dynamite, isn't it? Absolutely, and I'm really surprised with the fact that you said we use a script. But, yeah, <laughs> so look <laughs> professional. But yeah, absolutely, from, from a YouTube's perspective, yeah, absolute game changer for us. Who do I see using it? Do you know what? I'm going to throw it out there. Everybody. Everyone. Agree. Because if you're an enthusiast, you take your time to wash your car. It's mm -hmm. not about time, speed, or anything else like that. So you want, so you want to take your time. And, and how and many people do we see on on our Facebook group asking about how to stop water, um, sports, um, water spots? And the the normal is go and get a water spot remover. If you can r eliminate that. All right, and bearing in mind, if you don't get all the water spots, they can eat into that clear coat and exactly. cause damage and everything. It's prevention rather than cure, isn't it, really? So, in, in, as a longevity, yeah, mm. definitely. We're, mm. we're preventing damage to the clear coat. In the short term, obviously, we're reducing the amount of time we're having to put also acidic pro products onto the Absolutely, car because yeah. every water spot remover is acidic. So you, you or acidic shampoos, yeah. Yeah, so we're reducing that need for it. Agreed. So, Professional detailers, then? Absolutely. You look at it from a probably not using it all the time but certainly from a rinse element mm -hmm. i could see that being a massive bonus to these guys absolutely yeah it arguably it's an upsell 
if you're doing two, three, four cars a day, okay, uh, you're washing it, you're drying it, you're not always hanging around half an hour to get all the drips off the wing, wing mirrors and everything. If you've done your final rinse, like Carl said, um, with a, uh, you know, with, with water that's gone through one of these systems, you're not gonna get the water spots. You can basically walk away. Even if there is drip, okay, a drip, it's gonna, you know, va vaporize, okay, and not leave anything behind. So, and like I say, potential upsell, it comes across as you being professional. Yes, right? definitely. On the professional side, um, I do know that some people that use these and they fill their sort of tanks in their vans, okay, so they, they're not using this um, through their jet washer, they're using this as a mechanism to get that sort of spotless water into their tank um, and then they can um, go, go on their business. So I agree with you, the argument for this is everyone, all right? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so now talking about price. Now, I'm not going to um, sort of um, um, package this up. This is an expensive system. The one we've got is uh, 400 and 550. 550 pound for the unit and then another 100 pound for the actual trolley. So you're looking at 650 pound. We've articulated the reasons why I went for this one is because it does everything for me. That bypass, it's on the trolley, you can wheel it around, all good, all right? So if you are looking for choice, Heather from Autocar HQ did a recent uh, video on a single DI vessel. Go and have a look at that. Um, she takes it from a different angle, okay, but it's all about choice. And now I think the one that she was using was about 120 pounds. All right, so it's all choice, all right. This offers a lot more facilities, but we, we're cognizant of the fact that people have got different budgets, all right. But if you want to start off with a cheaper one, um, and then pot potentially if you see value in it, go on to a more expensive one, um, that might be the route you wish to take. But if you do want to stick to the big boy brand, they do a slightly um, smaller version of this, which is one carbon filter and one DI filter. That's about 100 pounds cheaper, and it does fit this trolley as well. Now, I'm aware that Big Boy are looking um, at producing or adjusting this one um, for the three sort of uh, cylinder uh, vessel because they've had sort of feedback that um, it might be a bit unstable. We haven't had any issues with this whatsoever, um, but I can see if you're wheeling it around, maybe one with um, slightly wider wheels. Okay, so they're looking into that. And they all are also looking at a different variant, um, I think, of the TDS for faster flowing machines. And um, we're using the other P60 Evolution, which it was fine with. Now, we did do a, a sort of parity check regarding regarding the accuracy of the TDS. Um, now, in terms of the water quality <coughs> coming in from the tap, um, going through this machine, it was reading 550, round about that. Round about that, yeah. We also got a TDS from Amazon, it cost us about 20 quid, and that was reading about half of that, wasn't it? For yeah, about 245. Two yeah, 245, um, so sort of about half, all right. Which is, which is fine, and um, which one's more accurate, we don't know. The important bit is the quality coming out. And that's where, thankfully, both of them married up. Um, we were sort of holding yeah, on the machine round about zero. It was flicked to sort of 1.1.2 a few occasions. Um, but we did a, a check using the Amazon TDS, and it was exactly the same. And arguably, that's the important bit. All right, so there was a slight difference in terms of the quality of the tap water coming in, um, but everything married up in terms of the DNI's water quality coming out. Okay, we've talked about the price. Now we're talking about the running cost, which is what um, arguably puts people, some people off uh, their concerns you know, like buying a printer. You get a exactly. cheap printer, um, how much your cartridge is going to be. Um, this is an expensive machine, how expensive are the running costs? Now, the statistics I can give you are basically straight off the box. So this system professes to uh, filter 2,880 litres before you start needing to sort of look at filter changes. And that's based on 100 parts per million water quality going in. Ours is considerably higher. But based on the 100 parts per million, um, big boys say that it will give between, if you're using it for a sort of single stage rinse at the end, between 160 and 192, which is, which is quite good. If you broke that down, yeah. that's really quite good. We can't sort of, um, sort of endorse that because we haven't tested it and our water quality is three times worse than that or two or three times worse. So what we're going to do is the first time or when we reach the point whereby we need to start looking at a filter change, we're going to run another video. We're, we're going to record um, on a bit of pen and paper um, all the times we've used it so we will then be able to give you accurate statistics using our system as to how um, how, how, how much um, or you know how much water it's filtered before we need to start looking at changing it yeah okay so big boy um, sort of suggests changing the carbon filter every sort of four to six months all right and the DI vessel as and when now we've asked ourselves a question when we're at the point whereby we're getting water spots which one do we change and we're gonna go for a DI vessel um, replacement first 
But then it's which one do you change? Because the first one's taking the most work, the second one's fine tuning. All right, but we're gonna have a play with that and we're gonna give you our thoughts and costings when we come to changing our filter. But they're the statistics, 2,880 litres, um, 100 parts per million, giving you um, in excess of 160 single rinse stages. All right, they're the, they're the specifications from them. Okay, so lots of talking, final uh, wrap up bit. Um, I've used the term game changer, it is for me. Like I said, should have bought one of these years ago. Um, I highly encourage anyone to get one, really. Um, if you haven't got, you know, 650 pound, get a single DI one. Um, the head of video shows how effective they are. Um, but, you know, say it's all down to budget. Um, absolutely loved it. The main thing for me was that, the, you know, we can now almost eradicate the drying sequence, which is safer because we're not inducing marring. We might still use the blower. But I, I agree with you in the fact that it's a game changer for us because mm. the stress is going to be off us with how quickly we're having to do the drying stage, uh, the rinse stage and the drying stage mm. first. So I'm looking forward to using this much, much more. I think we'll use it every time. We are going to be uh, trying out more big boy products, so um, wait out for those videos. Um, but I think um, it's obvious that we're really, really impressed with it. Um, we'll be using it on the subsequent videos to um, speed up the process and to avoid getting water spots. Um, water spot removers, they're a thing of the past for us. <laughs> we'll keep them just in case. So until the next video, take care. Bye-bye.